Murphy. Welcome, Linda and Dan. It's so exciting that you're joining us today to celebrate the Virtues Project 30th anniversary. So welcome and congratulations on an incredible milestone. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to start off with just sharing the words with the global community. We have people all over the world who are joining us to celebrate this and take us into the next 30 years. And I'd love to hear a little bit about just your vision when you started this. You know, this is, there's so many milestones and there's such a beautiful community that's come together. You know, what inspired you when you first started this and what was the vision that you hoped for when you created the Virtues Project with uh, you and John and Dan, the three of you together? Maybe Linda, you can start and uh, share some of your thoughts. Sure. Well, first of all, I wanna say hello to everyone. Bonjour, <laughs> buenos dias, and everything else. <laughs> <Kira. We're, Kira. laughs> We're really happy to, to be with all of you. When we started this project, it was actually a family initiative because Dan, and John and I were looking for a way to be of service. This is something that Dan and I did on a regular basis each year. And when John came to visit us, he was really ready to do something to be of direct service. So we said, well, come with us and we'll, we'll do something. And what came to us was the need to confront the, the violence amongst children and toward themselves and toward others. And so we thought, well, what do they need? They need to know that their life has a meaning and a purpose, and that they're, they matter. And so we thought, well, how do you, where do you look for the meaning of life? And what came to us was the sacred texts, the sacred scriptures of the world's religions, and the stories and the oral traditions of indigenous people. And that's when we discovered that golden thread of unity running through all of them is the virtues. Mm -hmm. Our life is for love, for justice, for excellence, for creativity, for joy. Mm, beautiful. And Dan, what about you? Were you were you along the ride? What was your kind of your big hope when you first started the project as well? Well, the virtues are the finest fruits of the human spirit. These are the qualities that stand out that everyone admires. These are what makes us human. These should be the most common things in our life, the most common words in our family, the most common words in the community. And they weren't. They were amongst the rarest. So my vision was basically, let's bring it into the awareness of the world to realize that this is truly what matters. It is the keys to success at whatever you undertake. These are the things that are the most important in every community, in every family, in every nation throughout the world, in every culture. Let's make them more visible. Let's make them more present. Let's bring our awareness to the point where we realize this is truly what matters. Mm. Yeah. And I think one more thing is that when we realize the power of this, this knowledge that we tapped into, because Dan is, has always been a scholar of the world sacred tradition. So we had that to call on, that amazing wellspring of, of knowledge. And <clears throat> what I felt most of all is we need to make the sacred accessible in everyday life, bring the virtues into a real, um, awareness, but also into people's behavior, into their lives, into their parenting, into their marriages. And the more time we spent with people in the world responding to these virtues, the more we realized it was a whole way of life. You know, it's interesting, Linda, you mentioned, you know, people in their family and their marriages, in their communities, in their schools, the virtues have been used in so many ways and impacted so many people's lives. Uh, and, and there's a community of people actually who are actually sharing this body of work who are part of the big community. What would you say, and this is such a hard question, what are you most proud of? What, what brings you the most joy as a memory of what you created in the Virtues Project? 
You know, honestly speaking, it's for me, it's those moments when I see that aha in the eyes of someone like, do you mean that I have all those gifts inside of me? <clears throat> I've heard that from people who are in prison for life. I've seen that their face light up and tell me, now I know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, even though I'll never get out of here. I've heard it from young people. I'm thinking of a young man in Yap, one of the countries in the North Pacific, where <clears throat> the director of education had heard about the Virtues Project and asked us to come there. And we never even, well, I hadn't heard of it. And <clears throat> at the end, there was a big celebration and a big feast. And this big boy came up to me and he said, Linda, I want to be a man of virtue. I was a bully before I took your class, and now I want to be a man of virtue. And I said, so when you were a bully, I said, that's a really wonderful sense of purpose you have. <clears throat> and I said, when you were a bully, did you boss people around? Did they do things that you told them to do? Did you have a lot of control? I said, yeah. I said, well, if you wrap that control around leadership and around love, you will be a leader of this country when you are older. And he started jumping up and down and the whole building shook because it was on stilts, you know? And so this kid was just so thrilled. Whenever that happens, that just gives me such joy. Whenever I see a person do that and when it, Lately, when it's a whole organization, lately meaning the last couple of decades, <clears throat> it's really very exciting to see it come to life. It's amazing. You share the love with somebody else and they just they exude it in so many different ways and, yeah. and physically jumping up and down and just showing the joy for learning something that changed <laughs> this person's life. Dan, what are you most proud of? The common language of children. They don't know the words. But love comes naturally, patience comes naturally, all the qualities, all the virtues come naturally because it's part of who and what they are. But it does take someone to look at them and to see it and to acknowledge it. And if the words are unusual, you explain. Well, patience means to wait. That's all you have to say. And the kid says, I waited, I'm patient. It belongs to them. And any time a child realizes that these qualities belong to them, that's the most gratifying thing. Mm -hmm. Dan has always loved children. Mm -hmm. He was a child psychologist in his former life. So you can't go through an experience like this without having some teachable moments, which is one of the Virtues Project strategies. What would you say are some of the teachable moments that you've had along the way? You want to get personal? <laughs> uh, uh, why not? <laughs> My teachable moments personally have all been about trust. Right from the beginning, we were guided in this project. There's no question about it. We felt guided by the spiritual realm. This is something the world needs. You know, it started <clears throat> when we first landed in Vancouver on a plane. I heard this amazing array of voices saying to me, from this point, your work will encircle the globe. I had no idea what they were talking about. So I feel like we were part of a greater plan. Anytime that I lost trust in life, in God, in spirit to provide what we needed for the next step and try to control it myself, that's when things got a little bit off track. So for me, a lot of times it was, this is too much for us. It was going all over the world. And so were we. And we didn't have much support, you know, administrative support. So there were times where I would create a partnership. And I say, I, oh, because I don't think Dan ever really was enthusiastic about that. But John and I tended to want to have a partner who knew more than we did about running an organization, but it never really worked out. It was the three of us that were meant to do it. And then the community 
that came around us as it is now, where the facilitators and the master facilitators and enthusiasts of the virtues are really doing, organizing the work, the website, etc. cetera. So yeah. me, it's trust. For trust. me, life is a humbling experience. I've often made the point that we founded the Virtues Project, but we didn't create it. The ones who created it are the ones who understood what it was and then used it in their everyday life and in their work and in their schools. They're the ones who made the project what it is. Yeah. If you look back and say, how did you do that? Didn't do it is really the answer. Just made it possible for others to do it. Yeah. All the people involved in the Virtues Project are the co-creators of the project. Any attention we get, in my humble opinion, does not really deserve the people involved in the project are one who deserve the praise. It's true because without all of you and the people around the world that have embraced this, it would never have happened. So I think it was an idea whose time had come and it's taking all of us together to help virtues go viral, which is what I'm hoping for the future, actually for the present. That was actually my next question is, what is your big hope going for for the next 30 years and beyond? And virtues going viral is, is it, it, it has a beautiful ring to it. And it's, it's so important because it's very crisp and clear. What does that look like to you? How, what, what would it look like if virtues went viral into this next, you know, Three decades. Well, you know, it's really come a long way already, Dave. The word virtues was very scary to people in back in the day, 30 years ago. It, they were afraid that there was a church trying to take them over or whatever. It was just too churchy sounding. Now it's used all the time. Even the word virtues is used. It's become part of the language. When, whenever people are talking about what's important, you're going to hear the virtues. But um, I'll tell you what I'm feeling right now is that the world we created, the world that humanity has created, it's burning, it's drowning, people are starving, there is war everywhere, and we need to call this ourselves back from that. We need to practice the basic teachings of all the great wisdom traditions. We need to love each other. We need to take care of each other. We need to share resources. So for me, a world where virtues are really being used is a world that would be, first of all, support the oneness of mankind, to realize we are all human. We are all people of one planet. And that we need to share the resources. We need to disarm. We need to fix our climate. And there are many ways that we could do that in time if there was enough will, enough collective will. So my feeling is that virtues such as idealism, purposefulness, truthfulness about what's going on right now. We have a pandemic. We have this huge effect of climate change. And we need to take responsibility and say, what can I do as an individual and what can we do as a community of people around the world to support others? You know, I'm thinking about if we simply applied the five strategies, if we companioned people who are so anxious these days, you know, who are really scared about what's going on, because there's such an exhaustion. We have emergency exhaustion and, you know, crisis fatigue. And I don't think that's going to end anytime soon. So my thought is even in the next few years, we need to embody those five strategies. We need to look at the teachable moments. We need to communicate with the people that have power and speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to embody it in our own lives because I'm going to take one of your lines down. Dan always <laughs> says that we're so connected in the human spirit. So anytime, you know, I 
have an act of courage or um, I learn from a teachable moment or I deepen my trust, which is something I'm doing these days. You know, this is a gift to other people because it's gonna spread. It's that ripple effect. So those in the Virtues Project who simply live the life of virtues are doing a huge service to the world. Those that teach it are taking it a little farther, but it always comes back to, am I living these strategies? Am I living the virtues? And then what am I called to do to be of service? How do I give to my community locally and around the world? It's always been my conviction that to make the virtues real in everyday life would take a couple of generations. 30 years, good long generation. At first, you have to use the language intentionally. You have to make yourself say this. I see your kindness. I see your caring. I see your compassion. Rather than just saying thank you when someone does something. That's compassion. You have to make a conscious effort to do it. Children who were raised with their parents making the conscious effort to do it, for them, it's natural. It doesn't take effort after that. It just comes naturally to acknowledge the virtues when you see it. The solution to all the world's problems is very simple. Act on the virtues. Be kind, be caring, be just, be responsible, be patient, be loving. You run down the list, be self-disciplined. All the virtues are required for humanity to thrive. We're at the point where we can thrive, but all it does is take a generation that's willing to embody and live from their highest qualities. Mm. And that I think is inevitable sooner or later. It ain't, it's gotta happen. Yeah, mm. I really feel like more and more the problems in the world are becoming more visible and people cannot turn away from them anymore. So we need strategies to say, how do I turn this around? And I think the virtue strategies are among those that could really help people. Mm, beautiful. You know, both of you have talked to, you know, shared so many wisdom about what the virtues mean to you. And there's, there's one person who's obviously of the founder who's not with us today. And, uh, you know, John was such a, a vital part of, of the creation of this program. If he were here, do you know anything that he might want to share with us? <laughs> what what words of wisdom? Question. <laughs> what words would he might want to part <laughs> on us? What do you think, Dad? You know, you're the one I love that John. question. You channel John. Go you ahead. know what? <laughs> At his last talk, he gave a final address to you know, a large group of people. It was his, one of his, on his bucket list before he died a few weeks later. And he said, you know, in the movies, you got the close up and you got the wide shot. <laughs> and he said, we need to do both. We need to focus on the close up. How am I bringing virtues into my marriage, into my parenting, into my spiritual life? Do I see virtues as a practice? And how am I dealing with the wide shot? What am I doing for others? What am I doing for my community? How am I speaking truth about the need to end racism? Am I joining with others that are doing the same work? Am I partnering? You know, so I think that's what John would say. I love the idea that you took a, a, a visual metaphor, you know, the, the lens of the close up, right. and, and it just, it's really powerful for somebody who had such a creative mind and really appreciated visuals. Uh, that's a beautiful metaphor. So, uh, a few moments ago, Linda, you mentioned, uh, you know, about uh, being of service and the, and the broader community uh, that we, we have. And many of the people who are, uh, are watching and part of this right now are facilitators, possibly future facilitators. Uh, or, or people just who really love the virtues and want to share it uh, more broadly in their families, communities, workplaces, and so forth. What guidance would you provide them? And as a celebration, um, what would you have for inspiration that might be, um, you know, keep them going forward? 
in the next 30 years? Well, I think an important question for each of them to ask is, what is my calling at this time in my life? Because when, when something inside that makes them happy, that, that ignites their joy, some way of being of service, some way of being in the world, connects with other people's needs, then you know they have really discovered something awesome. So I would say, bring it into your life, bring it into your family, bring it into your work. And if you feel called to teach it, then use your social media. That's the medium today. You know, my hope is that we're going to continue to evolve the Virtues Project website so that it's not only of great service to all of you facilitators, but it's also something that if someone happened to just sort of jump on the website, they'd say, hmm, this is an experience that I would like to have. This is a community I want to consider joining. This is a, a something that speaks to me, you know? So I think it's important to know, first of all, what do you feel called to do with this season of your life? What are your yeses and how can you give back? Because everybody's got something to give. Everybody has a gift mm. or more. And so what is your gift? <laughs> Dan, would you like to speak? <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think to everyone is remember who you are and be your best self if you offer it to your friends that starts a process that they'll offer it to others and it'll spread around the world and keep in mind children do not know who they are yeah. unless someone tells them they look at the world and try to find out who they are. And unfortunately, they believe what they see and hear, even if it's not accurate. If no one takes this time to see the best in them, they'll grow up not knowing who they are and then can't offer it to anyone. Yeah, you know, I'm longing for the virtues practices, say, in parenting to get into communities where there's a lot of abuse and poverty and really a sense of loss of self, loss of culture. People need to be renewed. And whenever we have gone into a community like a First Nations community that needs a lot of healing, they tell us that the virtues have restored the spirit of their people. And I feel like we need that in every neighborhood in this country and other countries where there is any kind of abuse, poverty, we need to lift people up. And I think social programs are super important right now. At the same time, it's like Dan says, once a, a child especially or anyone knows who they really are, they rise to that and they keep rising. So even when they go through a hard time, they bring themselves back to, I know I'm a good person. You know, someone told me that I was helpful. Someone told me that I was kind. Well, I, I think I speak for everybody on this on this call that, uh, you know, thank you for your service to humanity and, and, and your commitment to creating a program that has lived on for 30 years and seems to be having a life of, you know, much longer. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable in how many places this is. You've planted some deep roots for something that's just going to continue to blossom. And, uh, and thank you for bringing so much positive change to so many people's lives. Um, if you had, this is the last question now, because we're going to move on, but what is just, what's your biggest hope for your legacy? And uh, you know, it's, that's a word that Dara had, had brought up. It's like, it's a legacy, you know, and it's, you are, leaving something behind to so many other people who are carrying it forward. What's your big hope of what that will look like? You know, honestly speaking, my big hope is that the books, the materials, the virtues language app, um, all of these things will go out to millions, billions of people. And that all of you will find a community to serve because every 
aspect of life is affected by these virtues and these strategies. So I would love to see it blooming even more in prisons, in schools, in families, in organizations. And, you know, to me, the legacy is very simple. The applications are very many. And so, you know, to me, the greatest gift this whole time is that people continue to have a passion and a commitment to this project. After 30 years, they're still ignited by the power of the virtues. Mm. And we're not out there anymore, you know, very much. So, and yet they're still so excited. They're still saying, I wish I'd had this all my life, you know? Well, now it's in your life. So use your life <laughs> to serve. Beautiful. Dan, any closing words? I look forward to being awed by what you do with these projects. Thank you very much. Thank you both so much. Thank you.